What's up guys, so this is another tutorial for the minimap and this video will be uh, talking about the change in the texture or the minimap texture at runtime. Basically while playing the game you want to change the texture to something else. For example if you have a multi-floor building and you want to show for each floor you want to have a different texture. Or if you load an, a new level you want to uh, change the minimap texture to that a specific level. Now in this example I have a building with two floors the bottom one and the top one and of course uh, I have three textures one for the whole map where we have the entire building uh, showing up and then once we enter the building we uh, then change the minimap texture so that we can see inside the building and of course we're going to start with the bottom floor because that's where we're going to be at first and then once we go to the top floor we'll we will also change the minimap texture so so let me show you the example so the minimap is at the bottom left and so we're outside right now so once we enter the building you're going to notice that the me uh, the minimap texture changes to uh the bottom floor uh, or like changes in general so here we are in the uh, elevator room and so uh, we can go of course to the top floor and see the texture uh, changing once again so I'm going to go here press F to go up and then I am at the uh, top floor and the minimap texture changed to that uh, so that we can see what's going on on the top floor of course this is a simple example there are multiple examples where you can change the minimap texture uh, like I said for another level or for example if there is like night and day you can of course change the texture based on uh, based on the weather or based on what time is it and, and the day so we are in the uh, top floor now if we go back to the uh, uh, bottom floor uh, it's going to change of course with the bottom floor and so we can see the rooms etc and once we go outside uh, the texture of course uh, is going to change based on uh, what we set it to so basically all you want to do is just call the function change minimap texture so that is the function that you want to use to change the minimap texture it's going to ask you for a, um, a a texture and of course the map width uh, that you have in your texture so I'm going to go to this folder and this is of course the map we're going to go to the character so for the minimap, I've already done a couple videos explaining how you can add the minimap to your project. So it's just a simple widget with the minimap component in it and with the settings, of course, we for the map texture, we just initialize it to the uh, the texture that shows the entire map. So if we go here, uh, we have three textures, one for the whole map, so showing the entire map one for uh, the top floor so when you go to the top floor and one for the bottom floor so, so these textures I uh, I have them here in Photoshop and I just you know changed a couple things here and there it's just a simple example I didn't put a lot of work there just to uh, just to show you how it's done um, so basically uh, you can use any image you want you can literally just start from uh, from scratch on Photoshop and just make your map make your minimap texture if you want and you can just import it and use it with the minimap so if we go back to the uh, character here so the first thing we want to do of course is uh, create the widget add it to the viewport and then call minimap start update so that we can start updating and we store the minimap as a variable or this widget so that we can access it later and then I added a uh, custom event called change texture uh, with the texture ID so basically just to identify what texture we want to apply so zero will be for example the whole map one will be the bottom floor and two the uh, top floor um, so this uh, this event can be called from anywhere uh, in any actor that has access to the character can just call this event and request to change the texture uh, and of course here we uh, check if my minimap is valid the widget and then we simply uh, get the minimap component and then we call the function change minimap texture now like I said all you have to do is just call change minimap texture anytime in the game you can just call this function give it a texture and you can change the texture so uh, when you add the widget to the to the viewport you want to store the uh, return value uh, 
uh, and a variable. So we called it my minimaps and so that we can, for example, use it later by just getting the minimap component and then calling change minimap texture. And this one, it accepts a texture. So any texture you import in UE4 or you make or something like that. So you can just give it a map texture or a render target. So here we just gave it the texture using a data table. This is just a way to store something. So here we stored uh, a bunch of textures based on the ID. So I give it an ID here and I get a specific texture. And the map link, of course, this is very important, is pretty much just a link shown in the texture. And I'm going to show you in a bit how to get that. So basically, again, just call the function change minimap texture and just give it a texture. And here I just use the uh, data table. So we're going to go to this data table. So I created a new struct. So if we open the struct, uh, so this struct has two variables, ID and texture. So like I said, zero would be the whole map, one, the bottom floor, and two, the top floor. So if you want to add a structure, all you have to do is just right click, go to blueprint, and then you can add a new structure. And then of course you can add the variables uh, by clicking here in your variable. And so I have an ID of type integer and a texture of type texture 2D. I made a structure so that I can use it with the data table. To add a data table, you just right click here. So this is just my method of storing these textures. You can use your own method if you want. So if we go to miscellaneous and then you can find the data table right there. So you can add the data table and select the structure that you want to use. So my structure is texture ID struct. After you click OK, you can just open up the data table and then just add a bunch of values based on that structure. So row name would be, for example, zero. So same as ID. And then of course you want to select the texture. Here we can use the whole map. And then we add another one and, and you can see them here. So the second one would be one and the same thing for the ID and then you select the other texture. So for example, bottom floor and so on. So uh, I already have the table. So this is a table. So the first thing is the whole map with uh, ID zero. Second one is ID one with bottom floor uh, texture. And, and the last one is uh, row name is two. Same thing for the ID and in the character, so I simply use the get data table row and I give it the data table and the row name. So zero, one, two, etc. So uh, whoever uses this event will send a texture ID, uh, basically what texture. So zero, like I said, is the whole map, etc. So uh, I convert the ID into a string so that I can convert it into a row name. So zero, one, two, etc. And it will return a structure. So here I just split the structure and then we have the ID and texture. And so I just gave it the, uh, the texture. So again, the main ID is simply using the, uh, the function change minimap texture and just giving it a texture pretty much and map link. So this is my method of storing textures. So you can, again, use your own method of verifying what situation you are in. I, am I inside a building? Am I in a cave, etc. Now this event is going to be called by an actor I just created. So if we go here to the uh, here stuff actors. So it's a simple actor with a, uh, a collision box right here. So so when I overlap the, the box, so again, I just selected the box, went to uh, collision and just for collision presets uh, custom, I just chose to ignore everything but the pawn. So I only overlap the pawn. And here you just right click add event on component begin overlap. Uh, again, you can use your own method here, but for simplicity, I just used a, a collision box. So uh, other actor uh, cast to my character, which is M floor character. If the cast is successful. So I just call change texture. Now we saw the event right here in the character. So Again, I'm going to go back here. So I call this event from this actor and, and then I give it the texture ID. So I'm going to, to place a bunch of these actors and each actor has an ID. So what texture you want me to change, etc. So here we have the texture ID uh, set to public and exposed on spawn so that when I place this actor uh, in my map, I can select what texture ID I want. So 
Let's go back here and for example, if I put it here, uh, you can see uh, in the texture ID, you can select what uh, texture ID you wanna do there. So this is a simple method. So I place it here so that when I'm outside, I can uh, select texture ID zero, which is the uh, whole map. And then once I enter is another one with texture ID of one, which is the bottom floor. Here uh, we have an elevator, sort of. And then of course you wanna go up and then here's another one. I placed another one here so that when I get to the top floor, I can change it to texture two by calling the event once again and the character. And of course, when I'm uh, when I'm down, I'm going down, I can overlap this box and change the texture to texture one. So once again, if we uh, just go here to the uh, to the actor to select the collision box and just show it on game. So hidden in game, and we're going we're going to uncheck that so that we can see uh, see the boxes in game. So here's the box. So I'm going to overlap it, and there you go. So we call the function change minimap texture, and we give it the texture uh, that we get from the data table. And then of course I'm going here, and I'm going to overlap this one right here, and it changes the texture to the top floor. And of course you can just walk around, etc., until you request to change the uh, the texture once again. So if you go down, even if if you overlap it again, you can just uh, verify what texture ID you have, so that you don't change it if it's already uh, what you want. So press F, go down, overlap that box, and then of course I request to change the texture. So this is just my method of doing this, a simple method, but you can use your own method based on the game, of course. So if I go outside, it changes to the uh, texture ID zero, which is whole map. So whenever I request to change the map, I store the current ID into a variable so that so that if the same actor requests to change the minimap texture multiple times, I only do it once by verifying if it's already uh, zero, or one or two. So if the current texture uh, ID is not the same as the one you, you are requesting to change, then I can change it. If it's the same, then I do nothing because it's it's already done. And so uh, once again, you simply call change minimap texture from the minimap component. Now for the map link, it's basically just the width of the area that you have in your texture. For example, if I go to the uh, here to the, for example, this uh, texture. So the map link is pretty much just from this point to this point. So from the edge to the edge, it's just the width pretty much of the entire map and this uh, blue area right here. So it is in world unit. So you can use, for example, if we go to the uh, viewport here, now you can go from perspective here to top so that we can see the entire map. And based on the texture, like we've seen here, so we have the entire uh, map plus this, uh, this area right here. So all you need to do to calculate that distance is just come from here, for example, and just hold the middle mouse button and just drag to the other point and just calculate. As you can see, it's about 6,000. Uh, so that's the distance and world unit. Um, you can use the scene capture to just calculate that distance. Uh, if we go to here, change back to perspective. If we go to a uh, minimap component and go to actors and then map capture 2D, and you can simply use this one just to get the distance. Um, and that's all. So just place it here on the map go to properties and then location you want to put it on the center so x will be zero and y zero as well and you can see the preview here and the map capture top view and if you go to the ortho width so scroll down to the ortho width or like just search for it here so ortho so ortho width is also in a world unit so basically what is the distance that you want to capture so if we put it to six thousand as well, you're gonna see that it's uh, capturing the same area that we have in our texture. So if you have a bigger map, you generally wanna increase that value, for example, to 12,000, for example. So you can use a scene capture to calculate the distance, or you can even use it to get a texture of your map. So this is going to be, or like this is the uh, texture of your map, and you can simply right click here and create a static texture. So once you do that, you're going to have a static texture. Now, once you do this, 
you no longer need the scene capture. You want to remove it so that you don't uh, waste performance. And so what you want to do is just right click and go to asset actions and then export. And it's going to be exported as an HDR. So like I did here. So I exported three textures and then I just went to a website and converted them into a PNG or JPEG or something like that so that I can work with them easily in Photoshop. If you are working with world composition, uh, basically you have a bunch of levels and you're making like an open world or something like that. So here I have this example where, where I'm using world composition with a bunch of levels. You don't need a texture for each level. So you can use just one texture that shows your entire uh, world. And then of course you can just work with that. For So for example, uh, here I have, I'm going to load all these uh, levels. So I have four levels here, as you can see here, and I'm just going to load everything. So here I have four uh, sub levels. And so I don't need a texture for each level. I just need one texture that shows everything. And then that's what I can use with the minimap. So here we're going to go here, for example, widget. And then of course we have the widget. So this is our widget here. So just for the example, and I'm just using one texture, which is this one right here. Now, if you need to change a texture at any time, you can just call minimap change texture, just like we've done in the first example. Now, if I just go ahead and play, as you can see, we have the texture. I, I can just go to different areas here, for example, to level two or like sub level two and any other sub level. And of course, the minimap will just work uh, will work just fine. So if you're working with the world composition where you have a bunch of sub levels, so just get a texture that's showing the entire world and you can just use that. But if you need to change a texture at any time, you can just simply call minimap change texture. So the function we, we've used. So that's pretty much it. If you need any support or they have a question or something, you need help with the minimap, just use the email address in the description. Also, there is a link for a blog where I write tutorials for this minimap and put examples etc so keep an eye on that and again if you need help just use the email address so that's pretty much it take care